Hey, George, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Hey, guys, uh, thanks for uh, holding. Uh, we will have Stephen Glass up shortly, but we're going to start here with George Bello. So, again, you need to go ahead and raise uh, your hand to get a question in. We'll start with Doug. Doug, your line's open. Go ahead. Uh, hey, George, congrats on the goal. Uh, but I need to ask about the, the first three goals scored by Nashville, all turnovers uh, made in y'all's third of the field. Why do things like this seem to keep happening during this shooting games? Yeah, um, like you said, we, we gave them, we basically give them goals. Uh, our turnovers, our mistakes. And uh, I feel like it's just a focus thing, a mentality thing, uh, getting into the game from the first minute. Like you said, we were on the, we were on the back foot uh, from like the first couple of minutes. So uh, I feel like we shouldn't feel bad for ourselves when that happens, we need to step up instead of going down. But yeah, I think it's just a mental part of it and being locked in from the first second, from the first whistle. And I think that's what we need to uh, get, get by and get forward, Mo moving forward, have that in our locker. Next question, Felipe. Felipe, your line's open. Go ahead. Thank you, Chris. George, uh, nice goal and a strong performance from you. But after the game, you were on the pitch, uh, visibly frustrated like the rest of the guys. Um, just talk about the, the result and, and perhaps the fact that it was a tough one. You guys were down three goals at one point. Yeah, I mean, it's really frustrating. Um, not having to win games, football is all about winning. And we're not doing that at the moment, but uh, that's football. And we just have to keep our heads up and try our best to keep our heads up. And this is a time where we can't crumble, uh, try to blame each other, try to go against each other. This is a time where we need to really come together, uh, look at what we're doing wrong, um, but not be uh, biased, not biased, but like against each other and just stay with, the, stay with each other through these times. And uh, like I said, football has tough times. This is really when we need to lock in and do things together and be together as one. Next question, back to Doug. Doug, go ahead. George, I'm curious if uh, any of the national players said anything about Miles Robinson's comments on Friday about y'all having the better players and, and should uh, win this game, either during the game or after the game. You said, pardon, can you say it again, please? On Friday, Miles said that y'all should win this game because you at Lenny United have better players than national. Uh, I'm curious if any of the national players mentioned that to you or said anything to you about that during the game. No, and I'm sure Miles didn't mean that with any disrespect towards them. Uh, he just has confidence in us as players, as his own teammates. And no national player had any comment on it. And like I said, I don't think Miles meant it in any disrespectful way. He just has confidence in his own teammates and himself. So, but no comment was made on the field. Felipe, go ahead, your line's open. Thank you. Uh, George, just, um, Again, we talked about this before, not having Pete Martinez, but you were able tonight to once again create combined with Virgo. Uh, just talk about that. Do you guys feel internally like there's a little bit more progress in the attack? I mean, the goals aren't coming, but do you guys feel personally that you are making progress? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, as a team, we just got to look at what we're doing wrong, uh, come together. But yeah, um, talk about me and Barco. We're both attacking players. We're both attacking minded. So we kind of know each other's movements. And that's definitely getting better. And hopefully, it'll keep progressing throughout these games. But yeah, like I said, in the end goal, as a team, we just need to come together and not stray apart. Rob, you straight. Rob, you're on Go ahead. Hey, George. Um, it's no secret that this team has really struggled to create chances in the attack. Um, is it, is it a role you could see yourself in the future, maybe playing a more attacking role? Um, uh, not really. I mean, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a left back. Uh, I can attack. I can defend. I also have, I feel like I have defensive qualities, which I also need to work on as well. But uh, it depends. I mean, whatever the coach, whatever the coach wants me to play, I'll play. I'm ready to play whenever. But um, I wouldn't see myself as saying, oh, I want to play a left wing. I want to play left back. Wherever I'm needed, I'm ready to play. And that's it, yeah. Anything else for George? All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, George. We'll have Jeff Lorena.
Hey, Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah. Great, let's go ahead and start with Jeff Doug. First question in your line, Doug. Hey, Jeff. Um, they score, Nashville scores three goals uh, tonight in the first half each because of a turnover uh, by Len Knight in its third. What is it that just uh, about the focus of this team that just can't seem to find the focus until it's giving up a goal or trying to rally? I don't know. I mean, tonight it just wasn't good enough across the field. I take responsibility. My performance was bad. I'm wearing the armband. Um, I have to get better out of my teammates. But first half wasn't good. Gave away the ball. Gave away goals. Did nothing to help Brad. Um, so turnovers, inconsistency on the ball. It was all there. Next question, Felipe, your line's open, go ahead. All right, Jeff. Uh, listen, you guys are still in the final spot for playoff qualification, 10 teams good, you guys are in 10. Uh, but to your point, the performances have not been good, tonight was not very good. Is there any hope that the fact that you guys are still in contention, is, is that some sort of motivation? Of course, there's hope, there's 12 games left. Um, we just did three day trips in a week against difficult opponents. Um, so of course there's hope, there's, there's 12 games. We have a week to prepare for our next game um, against a team that we need to beat. So there's absolutely hope and we need to work our way out of it. It begins with, with, with working as a group and preparing to step on the field with with full concentration the next time we play. <laughs> next question, Joe Patrick. Joe, your line is open. Go ahead. Hey, Jeff. I'm just curious if you kind of experienced uh, a, a, a kind of a form of a matter of form like the team is in now, and if, you, if there's any way, if there's any kind of experience you have that you can use as a reference point to try to you know, help galvanize the, the group here. Of course, I've been, you know, on bad teams for sure. You got to play your way out of it. Um, if you don't, it gets worse. It gets worse. It, it compounds. Each game gets worse. You don't want to come into training. It's not a good feeling. It's also something that this club is, is, has never done, and I don't see us doing it this year. Um, we have to work our way out of it. We have plenty of talent. We have um, plenty of ability on the field, but we can't allow ourselves to get it there, into that place. Um, it's strange the way the scheduling has gone because you only can look so far ahead. You have no idea what's coming next around the corner in terms of games and scheduling. But we do know that we seem to know that there will be 12 more games. So we have to believe that those will, will happen and, and we'll have ample opportunities to move ourselves up and work our way out of it. Back to Felipe. Thank you. Um, you know, during the week, Stephen Lassie called this this entire process and transition as a work in progress. Does that does it feel like that for you guys and the players? I mean, a work in progress means progress. You know, we have to we have to move forward. We can't take steps back. I mean, performances need to be consistent. They need to be consistent as a team. But it starts with doing simple things, and I think for a few games now, we haven't done those things. And um, when you don't do the little things early in the game, you know, you, you play behind the eight ball for, for most of the night. And then the team gets up on you, and, and then things open up. And that's, that's not the time to play. The time to play is at the beginning of the game. You get the small things right, and then, and then you build from there. That's progress. <clears throat> Last question, Doug. Doug, go ahead. We had the tap and we gave away a goal inside of, the, of a minute tonight. Um, we lost the ball, we were turned over, they got a corner kick and they scored. I mean, those are little things. You have the ball, you have possession, you have the ability to play in their end, to get on the ball and start the game with confidence in possession. And we don't, um, 
again, I put my hand up, you know, I'm in the middle of the field and, and need to do better. Um, and, and a small thing is, is just winning first, first ball, second balls, being on the front foot to start the game. Um, we didn't do it tonight. Those are the little things. Like I said, if, if you don't do them, they, they compound and, um, before you know it, you can, you can be buried. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I got your wings. All right, let's go ahead and start with the first question on the open. Uh, hey, um, you know, they scored three goals in the first half thanks to the turnovers uh, by the team. Uh, they just, again, didn't look like they were kind of on the front foot, which is your constant issue with your guys. How can you explain why it just doesn't happen? It's a... Uh, I don't think any manager in the country can legislate for the sort of mistakes that we made tonight. Uh, defensively off a set piece, poor, giving the ball away, poor, not defending crosses, not very good. Uh, it's not, uh, a, t a team can't be on the front foot if, if you can't pass it out of your own half. Uh, so that's, uh, in answer to your question about being on the front foot, that, that would be the reasoning behind that. Next question, which video is going to go? Good evening, Stevens. Uh, I know you've you spoken about this, about, about, about uh, really just like the like, responsibility of wearing you know, the Atlanta United shirt. Or, and, and you've been very honest about this performance in the progress of the team. Tonight, you're seeing the uh, like two goals, two, two expansions, like clearly it isn't the standard at Atlanta United. How, how, how did you address the team after the match? Hey, I think I did a lot of my talking at half time. Rather than after the game, we had a good discussion after the game. Uh, I think the players know the standards that are required and they know that there's no excuse for the performance level tonight. Uh, we, we win and lose as a group, obviously, a group of staff as well. Uh, but I think there's, there's a lot of people that know they didn't come up to the required standards to play for the club tonight. Yeah, I think uh, not so much a checkpoint, I wouldn't use that term, I'd say more a reality check. Uh, that if you don't do the basic things well, if, if clear instructions are not followed and people decide to do what they want to do rather than what the team needs them to do, then the team finds itself in trouble. Uh, so the reality check is that the work rate needs to stay really high. Uh, the, the following of instructions needs to happen. Uh, and it's not, you can't play for 45 minutes and expect to beat anyone. So I think that's a reality check. Uh, there is obviously a good number of games coming up that if, if we can start getting points on the board, we need to get in the playoffs. Uh, so the, the opportunity is still there. Uh, that's, but the excuse, there's zero excuse for the, the level of performance tonight in my eyes. I didn't actually read his comments, Doug. Where are his comments? He said that the we had a good player. He said it was not a Okay. 
Okay, well, if, if he said that, if he said that word for word, uh, I know sometimes things get reported and you don't say it word for word, and you, like you say, people paraphrase things. I don't know if he said exactly that. Uh, that's probably something you shouldn't be saying the day before a game, if it's what he said. Uh, it gets other teams back up. Uh, whether we believe it to be true or not, it's not something that you should be saying the day before a game. Uh, it gives an extra incentive to another team. Um, but yeah, there's not much else I can say about that without seeing him actually saying those words because I've, I've been quoted for saying certain things myself at times when those words did not come out of my mouth. So I'm not going to criticise Miles, but in answer to if he said those things, I would say that that's not something you should be saying about other players. Uh, I think to, to take any positives, again, I'm, I'm wary of saying anything positive out of the game tonight because it gets dressed up that I'm looking at positives out of probably one of the worst performances that the club's seen. So in, in terms of moving forward, when we were attacking them at times later in the second half and midway through the second half, there were positive aspects towards that, but I, I don't pull any positives out of the performance tonight. Yeah, it's, it's hugely motivating, and I think that's uh, that's the value of the reality check tonight, if you like. That the the team is still sitting in the playoff position. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. We know we have to improve, but if we can improve, there's obviously if if you get yourself in a decent spot late in the season, you can build and you can continue to grow. So that that is obviously the aim. That's the work rate that will be going in. That's the work rate that will be demanding. Uh, so. Hopefully the players are capable of doing it. I think they are. We believe in them, uh, and hopefully it's a, this is this for the performance again. Zero excuse, zero reason for it tonight. But it's important that it is a reality check and the realization that the standards at this club are higher than at a lot of other clubs, and the expectations are too. So it's a, it's important that we get back on board and finish the season where we need to be. <laughs> So I'll answer the last one first. I honestly do not know who is coming into the club, if there are any. So that's the Fox, the Fox Sports people have maybe got more information than myself, but I can honestly tell you that I don't know that. Uh, in terms of Jorgen Dam, he was feeling his hamstring. Uh, it was pretty evident he was, I think the speed that he runs, you, I don't know why or how, and obviously the physios and the medical people will be dealing with him just now, uh, but I believe he had a hamstring issue. Uh, how severe it is, I've got no idea. Uh, this evening wasn't the time to go finding that out for me, but you, you'll definitely be with the medical staff and we'll, we'll find that out early in the week, I'm sure. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you.